Hi, this is Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils Health Matters and Living the Wholesome Way. And um, this is week 12, I'm sorry, yeah, week 12, day 5 of our positive, peaceful affirmations that we are shouting out every morning, Monday through Friday. And, and we are following Dr. Susan Lawton's book, Positive, Peaceful Growth Calendar. And you can find it on um, at Aroma Tools or Oil Life. Okay, so if you've been following this, you know that the affirmation for the week is, I am forgiving myself for waiting to be happy. Now, so this whole entire week, we've been working on happiness. It's my opinion that when, when um, the universe knows that you are working on something, that it gives you challenges to... Um, to make sure this is really something that you want to do. This is really something that you want to change. Um, and so, so um, if you've been working on being happy now and you've had challenges this week on being happy, like that's just to be expected. Don't worry, you're gonna work through those challenges. We're all gonna work through the challenges and we are gonna get to a happy, peaceful state. Just saying that. Okay, so the affirmation, you know, there's an affirmation for the week and then an affirmation for today, for each day. And the affirmation for today is, I am gentle on my evaluations with myself, right? We talked on Monday, actually on Tuesday, about increasing our admiration time of ourselves and how, how admiring ourselves can help keep us more loving and calm, which can help other people be more loving and calm too. So um, as today, we're being gentle in our evaluations for ourselves. We are giving ourselves a little bit of grace when we do things that aren't perfect. We're, yeah, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna realize, oh, you know what, that wasn't so perfect so that we can switch them the next time, but we're still being gentle in our evaluations for ourselves, knowing that, hey, we tried, we tried. You know, giving ourselves the points for trying. Now, there's two songs that I really, really like when it comes to being gentle with yourselves. Um, one is called Gentle, and I think it's by Michael McLean. And I think you're gonna love it. And then another song is a song that I just um, found today on being gentle with yourselves. I'm gonna put both of those in the comments. If you have songs that you like about being gentle with yourselves or even being gentle with other people, go ahead and post them in the comments. We would love to hear. Okay, so you know that on Tuesday when that there's a diffuser blend, you know that there's a, dip, a diffuser blend that we diffuse throughout the whole entire week. And this, this week we were diffusing two drops of bergamot, which is the oil of self-esteem, two drops of helichrysum, which is an oil for emotional or physical pain, and two drops of um, juniper berry, which is the oil of the night or the unknown. Um, so we went into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we went into the emotional properties and gifts of each of those oils. It's Friday, one of my favorite days going into the weekend, and we are learning about how we can use those oils for ourselves. So um, my favorite book when it comes to learning how to use the oils um, physically, and it definitely has a lot of emotional stuff in here, is this, it's called um, Advanced Oil Magic. You're gonna love it. You can look up um, issues. Um, they have a ton of issues, or you can look up it, um, the different essential oils and, and what they're good for. And so I'm gonna be reading a lot from this book right here. Not everything, but some of the things. Okay, so bergamot. Bergamot is an antidepressant, and um, it's a carmative. So carmative, I had to look it up what carmative was. And a carmative is something that helps to relieve flatulence, which means that, I think y'all know what that means. Anyway, um, it's also neuroprotective. It's a sedative. Sedative are things that have two gifts, one, they keep you calmer, and two, they help you sleep well. And um, it's also a stomachic, which means that um, it promotes the appetite and it aids digestion. So it's 
you're going to hear me say this almost every single week that what an essential oil does um physically it also does emotionally what it does emotionally it also does physically like those two things are just super entwined so if bergamot is going to some be something that helps you get your appetite back it's also going to be something that helps you get your appetite back for um for life okay so just remember that one okay so um bergamot as you know as we talked about on wednesday i think this week anyway um bergamot has a lot of linalool in it um the chemical constituent linalool now linalool is also very very high in lavender which is why lavender is so promoting to calming and sleep i think that everyone knows what lavender does for you when you think lavender when you think calming you now have another oil that you can think you can think bergamot too so although lavender is just really just calming bergamot which is a cross between a lemon and a bitter orange um bergamot has let a little bit so it's calming but it also it's a citrus oil and citrus oils are known for uplifting your senses right so have you ever gone to a spa and you just come out feeling amazing right you feel calm but you kind of feel energized too right that is what bergamot essential oil is going to do for you it's going to i just call it like the can do oil because it calms your fears with the linalool in it right and then it's going to the citrus oil is going to energize you so i just call it my can do oil um it is the top uses of of bergamot are it's great for psoriasis for that you can dilute it um one to two drops um in a carrier oil like coconut oil or um olive oil and put that on your the affected area um again it's great for sadness because it can calm fears can calm stress and energize you um it's great for um, an appetite loss, which we've already talked about, just put one to two drops in your water every day. That would be great until you're kind of got your appetite back and your appetite for life back. It's super good for addictions. A lot of people are addicted to things because they're sad in different areas or they're afraid in different areas. And, and bergamot can help with that. If you're using it for addictions, go ahead and diffuse it um, or put it on the bottoms of your feet. It's because it's a citrus oil, it's super good for acne. Um, so you can just put just put a drop on um in a few drops into your moisturizer at night. You're gonna because it's a citrus oil, it, it will make you more so photosensitive, which means that you're gonna burn easier and we don't wanna burn. So go ahead and only use the bergamot if you're gonna use it on your face only use it at night this would be a great oil to use um i might say maybe use lavender or melaleuca on your face if you're using it if you're using it for acne i would probably choose to put it onto like the if you have acne on your back that's where i would try to i would tend to use the bergamot okay um bergamot Y'all know bergamot is the oil of self-esteem acceptance, so it's going to do wonders for your self-esteem. So we're heading into holiday parties, or as we're, um, I don't know, sometimes through the holidays we can feel like we're not enough. We compare ourselves to a lot of different people that maybe we don't see all the time. Um, or it's at the end of the year, maybe we didn't get everything done that we wanted to. And so um, bergamot can really help with our self-esteem in that. And again, I've already talked about how it can help with insomnia because of the high linalool content in it and how it can it it can calm you and help you sleep okay so um i wanted to give you a stress relieving blend so um 10 drops lavender 10 drops wild orange um five drops of doTERRA's balance and five drops of bergamot oil go ahead and put that all into a 10 ml roller bottle fill the rest up with um fractionated coconut oil and roll it on whenever you feel yourself getting anxious and stressed i think you're really really going to love that blend okay the next oil that we are talking about is helichrysum now helichrysum is a little bit more expensive oil because um it just takes it just takes so much helichrysum to make 
a um, tiny bottle. And, um, but honestly, okay, I'm going to tell you some stories about helichrysum. you got to have helichrysum in your home. you got to have helichrysum in your first aid kit. I'll tell you more about that in just a minute. Okay, so the main properties of helichrysum is that it's antibacterial. It's an anti catarrhal and I had to look that one up, and it means that it dissolves, it helps to dissolve or eliminate mucus, mucus, um, it also prevents the formulation of mucus, and it also helps with the inflammation of the mucus membranes. There's a lot of gunk going on right now, like, I don't, I think I know so many people that are sick right now, there's, with, sore throats or congestion or coughs or whatever it is, um, helichrysum is going to help with it, with the antibacterial and the, and the anti-catarrhal properties of it. Okay, so um, helichrysum is also a mucosite. That's also something that I had to look up. And it means that it thins the mucus, making it less thick, less sticky, and easier to cough up. So if you just feel like your lungs are just congested, heavily congested, start diffusing some helichrysum, um, put it on the bottoms of your feet. You're definitely, it's gonna help put it on your chest area. It's gonna help you thin that mucus and cough it up and just get it out of your system, right? It helps, the anti catarrhal helps to eliminate it, the mucolite, helps to thin it and help you yeah, cough it up. Okay. Oh. Okay, so if you know, if you remember the, the, um, the, I guess, nickname for helichrysum is the oil for um, emotional and physical pain. So helichrysum is, can act very much as an analgesic. The main things that it's the top uses of helichrysum are tissue repair. So you can apply it neat to wounds. Like um, if you, and okay, right now is where I'm going to tell two experiences, one of my husband's and one of one of my friends um, in Little Rock. Okay, so here's my husband's experience. Well, I'll tell you my friend's experience first. So this is because this was really the first time that we heard of using helichrysum this way. So helichrysum is super good at tissue repair, but it's also good as a, um, at stopping bleeding, right? And, um, I'll tell you something else in just a minute, but it's also good at stopping bleeding. So this woman, um, she worked at, her name was Mary Jean, and she worked at, um, Hobby Lobby. And one day, one of her, um, coworkers, who was a woman, she was up on this step stool and she was doing something and this woman faints and then she faints she she um she falls and she falls through she as she's falling she kind of breaks one of the glass shelves that she was putting something on and she hurts her she cuts her hand and my friend Mary Jean she she knew it, she loved essential oils and she knew how to use them so she runs she gets her helichrysum and she puts it on this woman's hand and then, um, you know, takes her to the, helps her get up and, and get over to the sink, wash her hand, and she puts more helichrysum on it. And the woman said, oh my goodness, what did you do? And Mary Jean was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I just freaked out. When I saw you bleeding, I, anyway, I grabbed my helichrysum and I put it on you. And she goes, the woman said, well, you know what? I'm on blood thinner. And, um, and. And so usually when I cut myself, I just bleed and bleed. Well, that didn't happen this time because my friend, Mary Jean, knew how to use helichrysum. Okay, so that's one story. So in our back of our mind, we're like, oh, helichrysum, that's a super important oil that we want to make sure that we have in our first aid kit. Okay? Now, you usually don't have too many times where you have someone bleeding that you need to stop the bleed bleeding right away. You know, but... um. Anyway, so we didn't we didn't have a chance for years to use it that way. Um, I know just to let you know, geranium is super good at helping to stop bleeding too. Helichrysum would be like the the Mercedes, the Cadillac, whatever the major 
um, oil for that. Like if you're really bleeding, I would go run to Helichrysum. If you have a little nosebleed, I would definitely just go to Geranium. Just put a little bit, a drop of Geranium right there, and it will really help stop a nosebleed. Um, so those are two oils that you might want to have in your first aid kit. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you my husband's story about Helichrysum. So we are here, um, kind of, we've just kind of moved into our house now, and um, my husband is up on some step stool in the garage putting something up in the attic or something and he jumps down off of the step stool while he jumps down he um his hand must have been up by a board and it catches a staple in um in the board on his way down poor guy poor guy and he cuts his hand well he's in the garage i'm in the house doing who knows what and um my children are out there with him, and he tells them, tell mom to get the helichrysum. And I'm like, so the children come in, mom, get the helichrysum. And I am like, I start freaking out, right? Because I'm like, helichrysum, oh no, what's wrong, what's wrong, right? And so we get the helichrysum, he um, comes to the sink, washes his hand, we put the helichrysum on, and a couple minutes later, the bleeding stopped. Um, so... Those are two Helichrysum stories. Do your research on Helichrysum. It is super good at um, stopping bleeding. Now, one thing that you need to know about essential oils, and anyway, one thing that you need to know about essential oils is that they balance your body system. So not only is Helichrysum good for helping to stop bleeding, right? But Helichrysum is also super good for helping to dissolve blood clots. I knew. Um, someone who had a blood clot in their leg and and use the helichrysum on it. Again, think helichrysum, it can, it's an oil for pain, right? And those blood clots can be super painful, but it's also something that's gonna help dissolve them. Now, when I'm, I'm definitely not a doctor, so when I'm trying, when I'm saying to you something physically, you know, do your own research. I think that's the, the gift of the modern world is that we have so many um, avenues to research at our fingertips. One of my favorite places to research is called Aromatic Science. It has studies from all around the world. Um, so just do some studies on helichrysum. Okay, so heli top uses again. Back to helichrysum top uses. So it, it's great at tissue repair and um, you can apply it just straight to your wound or you can dilute it with olive oil, coconut oil, whatever it is that you want to dilute it with and put it on. Um, it can help clean a wound and help stop bleeding. It is great for exem eczema and psoriasis. So you can put one to two drops, dilute it into, onto an affected area. Um, it is great for shock. Now that's one that I didn't know. Again, which makes Helichrysum, a super powerful oil that you would want to buy to keep in your first aid kit. So I don't know if you've ever seen the um, the little keychains that are purple or black or probably other colors now, and you can put like eight different oils in them, and you can just hook it onto your belt loop or your purse. They usually come with like that whatever the linkers are. Kayla, what's the little linker that the keychains are on? Anyway, anyway, you guys all know what I mean. Anyway, so when my boys go to camp, we always try to send them with one of those keychains, or actually nowadays, we usually just send them with full bottles. But um, we send them with Healy Crystal when they go to boys camp because you just never know what's gonna happen when your children go camping, right? So anyway, Healy Crystal is great for shock. Another reason to keep it in your first aid kit. It's good for tinnitus. Go ahead and just put it on behind the ear Helichrysum is amazing for your nerves. Okay, so whether you're having some nerve pain or whether you're trying to help nerves heal, Helichrysum is very, very good for that. It's good for viral infections. You could go ahead and take one to two drops in a capsule. And um, it's great for cholesterol. Again, for that, you can take one to two drops in a cap capsule or put it on the bottoms of your feet. Now, I don't know what happened with my bottles of oil that I pulled. Caleb, can you just bro pull me any bottle of oil? I must have taken them somewhere um, while I was getting ready for this. But um, on every single doTERRA bottle, you'll have a supplement fact, like what you will see in a 
on the back of a cereal box if you can ingest it, which makes it super easy to be able to see um, which oils you can ingest or not. So this is peppermint um, oil, and we're not gonna be talking about this today, but I definitely wanted to show you the supplement facts on it. Like it says supplement facts, and if a bottle of doTERRA oils has these supplement facts on it, you know that you can take it internally, you know that it's an internal supplement as well, which means you can diffuse it, you can put it on topically, and you can ingest it. Now, the only oils that I would ever, ever suggest um, ingesting are doTERRA essential oils, and this is why, because they third-party test every single batch, every single batch of oil, and you can go on to um, source to you and at the bottom of each bottle is the is the batch number of, well, I guess it's the number of your batch. And so you can put the number of your batch and you can see every single test that was done on your oil and the results of your oil. So that is the reason why I would only ever suggest um, taking, taking, ingesting doTERRA essential oils. I mean, not that you can ingest every single doTERRA essential oil. I don't know that I said that right, but I wouldn't ingest any other any other brand of oil besides doTERRA for that reason. Okay, so um, here is a blend for Healy Chrism. I'm just gonna give you a blend for stretch mark remo remover or something that's gonna help lighten your stretch marks, okay? I would do 20 drops of Healy Chrism, 20 drops of lavender, and put that into a um, 10 mil roller bottle and top it off with fractionated coconut oil and then rub it on. Now, when you're using essential oils, you're not just gonna rub it on once and boom, the magic works, right? Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna rub it on frequently throughout the day. So if you're trying to help lighten up your stretch marks, I'd be doing it at least five times a day. Like um, waking and then before you, as you wake, before you get out of bed, as you're going to sleep, and then breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Those just seem to be the easiest times to do essential oils. And again, if you're using essential oils for anything that you really wanna make a major change in, smaller doses of the oils and more frequent applications are what you're gonna to wanna to do, okay? When you're using essential oils, more is not better. Less is better and more frequent ap applications is better. Okay, so that is Helichrysum. Now, um, again, Helichrysum is great for, for physical pain or emotional pain. It's one of the oils in doTERRA's Deep Blue. If you've never tried Deep Blue, if you've never tried Deep Blue, you're in for a treat. I would just say, get on, order it. Everyone has headaches sometimes or um, pain, soreness after exercising. It is super amazing for that. Some people have back pain or you know whatever other pain is deep blue is amazing to help with that okay so i just wanted to give a quick shout out on deep blue because healy chrism is one of the oils in it okay so we are moving on to our third oil that we're talking about which is juniper berry which we know emotionally is the oil of the night or darkness juniper berry when you think juniper berry emotionally what i want you to remember is that it can calm your fears so that you can look at things as they really are. So you can look at your faults. You're not afraid of looking at your past mistakes. You can start learning from them. That's the major thing that I want you to remember emotionally when it comes to Jennifer Berry. But now we're gonna be reading a little bit more about the, the um, physical health benefits of Jennifer Berry. And it's analgesic, so it's great for pain which is maybe one of the reasons why you can look at your past mistakes and your past um, whatever's because, you, or how reality actually is because it doesn't hurt so much, right? You can handle it. Jennifer Berry Lit is one of those oils that allows you to handle life so much better. Okay, so it's analgesic, it's anti anthopomentic, anthomintic, okay. Anyway, enthalmintic means that it destroys parasitic worms. So if you've been out of the country, if you've eaten ham lately, and we just had Thanksgiving, so you may have had ham at Thanksgiving, but ham is known for having parasites in it. And traveling out of the country, um, drinking different water that may be 
cleaned differently from ours. I, like some of those have amazingly better water than ours, right? But some of them don't. So if you've been out of the country lately or eaten ham lately, you might just want to put, um, start doing some juniper berry. Okay. Um, it is a antiseptic. We kind of all know what that is. It is a nervine and nervine means that it's used to calm the nerves. Okay, so the top uses of juniper berry is that it detoxes the kidneys and infections. Now we talked about kidneys um, yesterday when we were talking about the emotional properties of juniper berry, but I really, really quick wanted to give a shout out on in Chinese medicine what it does for you. The kidneys is where you store fear, um, where if you tend to be aloof or disconnected, um, if you tend to think that you can't do things, that's really, really stored in your kidney area. So juniper berry is a super good um, oil, Chinese medicine wise to use for those conditions. Um, so it's a kidney detox. It's great for kidney infections. Um, it's great for diabetes. You can take one to two drops in a veggie cap. You can do your own research on this. Go to um, aromatic science, see how it's being used around the world. Um, it's great for kidney stones. For that, you're just going to take one to two drops and just rub it over the kidney area. Oh, some people just suffer from them. I'm going to say if you are if you seem to get reoccurring kidney stones, you might want to look at your water intake because I hear that just drinking a little bit more water, we're all supposed to be drinking at least half our body weight in water. I know I struggle to drink my water too, but let's all just try to drink more water and then maybe we won't be getting those as much. It's also really good for urinary um, tract infections. Again, for that, you can just put one to two drops over the bladder area, rub that in. It's great for high cholesterol, one to two drops in a capsule, or you can apply it to the bottoms of your feet and tinnitus too. I didn't know that one about juniper berry. It's great for tinnitus. Again, you can run that, rub that um, in the back of your ear. And it's also good for chronic fatigue. With that, you're going to want to put one to two drops on your pulse points or diffuse it. Okay, so um, I'm just going to give you the kidney support blend, which I think would help both physically and emotionally with issues that are um, associated with the kidneys. So it's four drops juniper berry four drops of geranium, four drops of lemongrass, and four drops of copa, four drops of copaiba. You're gonna put that in a 10 ml roller bottle, top it off with fractionated coconut oil, and then apply it to the kidney area every few hours to help detox and to add a relief. Okay, so I think that um, that's kind of the physical properties of the different oils. Again, I'm. it's Friday, so anyway, I know you're going to have an amazing weekend. You remind, so um, I'm reminding you that the blend that we're diffusing this week is two drops of bergamot, which is the oil of self-esteem, two drops of helichrysum, which is the oil for physical or emotional pain, and two drops of juniper berry, which is the oil of the night or the unknown. And, um... The affirmation for today is I am gentle on the evaluations with myself. I'll be sure and go ahead and put those um, those songs that I'm loving with that affirmation into the comments. And the affirmation for this week is I am forgiving myself for waiting to be happy. Again, as you're trying to be more happy and you're trying to be more happy now, even when everything isn't perfect and you're trying to um, the things that you did in the past that don't didn't make you happy, you're, you're trying to um, stop those and start on a new path of things that actually lead to happiness. So we're forgiving ourselves for all the things that we did in the past that did not lead to happiness. We are moving on into the path of happiness. So I know that as you as you are seeking for happiness, you can do the things that bring you more of the eternal joy, not the surface happiness. Like I'm not talking about, oh, watch a movie or, um, oh, you know, eat a piece of pie or something like that. You know, that's surface happiness and that's fleeting and it comes and goes. But we can do the things that give us 
eternal happiness. And I'm just saying the thing that makes me the most happy is knowing that I'm acting in loving ways to other people. And I, you know, obviously I'm not the most perfect at acting in loving ways. No, none of us are the most perfect. I think there was only one perfect person that was perfect in everything, but I am striving. And I know that you're striving too. And I know that sometimes when it looks like you're not making headway, you are. You're making more headway than you than you think. So as you're striving for your different goals, don't give up. You're going to get there. Um, just saying. Okay, this is Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils Health Matters, living the wholesome life, telling you that I know that you can go and make it a great day. Okay, we'll catch you later. Bye-bye.